That right there is my $4,000 gaming PC. I built it back in 2020 and for the last 3 months I have not been using it like I used to. You see since I got my new MacBook Pro I moved all my content creation and content consumption over to the MacBook Pro. Now all I use my desktop is for gaming which I rarely do these days. In this video I'm going to share how MacBook Pro has really transformed my workflow. Before we begin, consider liking this video and remember to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. In this video, I'm going to share how this MacBook Pro has transformed my workflow. I really wanted a machine that had the horsepower of a desktop but in a portable form factor and I can say that this MacBook Pro really offers that. Coming back to my desktop PC, it's got a Core i9 with 10900K, 64GB of RAM and an RTX 3080 graphics card. By all means, this computer is really good at gaming. But when compared to my 16 inch MacBook Pro, it's only got 16 gigabytes of RAM and it offers similar performance to my desktop PC. For my day to day tasks such as editing videos and coding, MacBook Pro just wins that every time. Because I can use it if I'm docked on my desktop or I can just relax on a sofa and use my laptop just like a laptop. Only thing I use my desktop now is for gaming which I'm doing less these days. For my MacBook Pro, I went with the 16 inch MacBook Pro which offers 16 gigabytes of RAM and 1 terabyte of hard drive space. Now I did not go for the M1 Max as I didn't want to pay double the money for improved performance. I think that this laptop should last me the next 2 years without any needing for upgrade. But historically I've kept my 13 inch MacBook Pro from 2012 for almost 8 years and I gave it away in 2020. Now from a hardware and performance standpoint, the MacBook Pro is incredible. Aluminum construction feels sturdy and by far it's got the best build qualities of a laptop. Now I do admit it's thicker than the previous MacBook Pro but I don't notice that thickness that much. Initially I got the 14 inch MacBook Pro but it felt too small in terms of uh, screen real estate. I ended up with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Although the 16 inch MacBook Pro is heavier, I compromised mainly due to having a larger screen. The laptop display uses the mini LED technology which produces amazing results. The display is quite bright and it comes with ProMotion which provides up to 120Hz for a smooth experience. Using this display while sitting at a coffee shop, it's fantastic. I really like the larger real estate of the screen because I can do multitasking without any problems. Now my older laptops were 13 to 14 inch and in order to carry this 16 inch MacBook Pro, I got a new sleeve style case. When I put it in the carrying case, it looks really stylish when I carry it around. When I'm back in the home studio, I dock my MacBook Pro with my 49 inch ultra wide monitor. It's paired with the Logitech MX Keys mini keyboard and Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. For the docking station, I use the CalDigit TS3. By the way, if you're looking for, to get a new dock for your Mac, I highly recommend that you get this CalDigit docking station. I did try cheaper solutions, but they mainly can damage your laptop. So get a premium docking station like a CalDigit one or get something from another company like Anchor or something like that. Now the main reason I got the docking station is for mainly convenience. I can easily hook up my peripherals like the display, power, mic, external drives, the whole 9 yards and then have that all connected to my MacBook with a single cable. But I mean I can argue right now you really don't need a docking station because the new MacBook Pro has the SD card reader, it's got HDMI got pretty much everything that you need without using a dock. Now for hooking up any USB type A devices, I use this USB A to USB C adapter from Anchor. This really helps connect any older devices which only use USB type A ports. I highly recommend that you buy this if you have a Mac. A few things about the MacBook Pro, the keyboard is fantastic, got a good amount of travel and feedback. The Touch ID, it's ridiculously fast. I really love how you can make payments and log on to different websites with the press of a button. Or actually touch of a button. The trackpad is so good and responsive, I actually enjoy it while I'm editing videos. I use the trackpad when I'm in the laptop mode, but when I'm docked or using my desk, I typically use the Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. I went with that mouse because I can use it with my Windows, Mac, and work laptop. I usually use up to three devices with this mouse. If I really wasn't using multiple devices, then I would have just definitely opted for the magic mouse. Speaking of the battery life, it's amazing. It lasts me an entire day in most cases. I'm able to edit videos and all do that on a battery power. 
Never been able to achieve that on a Windows laptop. Also, if I'm not editing or rendering videos, then this MacBook Pro lasts up to three days on a single charge. While talking about battery life, it's hard to miss MagSafe. Apple brought it back and it works great for charging the laptop. One more thing I would like to mention at this point is the charger. Since I had the both 14 inch and the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the base MacBook Pro, which is the 14 inch one, comes with a 67 watt power charger while the 16 inch MacBook Pro comes with a 140 watt adapter. So for me, using the fast charger works great as I can quickly charge my laptop. Now I try to cycle my battery thoroughly, meaning I try to charge my MacBook Pro to 100% and then only plug back the charger once it gets down to like 3% or something. I know it's hard to achieve that, but for extending my battery life, it's best that you fully cycle your battery. Now let's measure performance. For this test, I'll render a 4K video using DaVinci Resolve which is my favorite editing software. I'm going to render the same project on my Mac and on my desktop PC. For background, this is a 4K video shot on a Sony A7C and an A6400 camera. And the project timeline is about 14 minutes long. By the way, do check out that video. I talk about Mac apps that I use for boosting my productivity. But continuing with the testing, I rendered the same project on both machines. Now it only took six minutes and 51 seconds to render that video on my MacBook Pro. Do keep in mind that I am only using 16 gigabytes of unified memory. And while it was rendering, I was doing other things like browsing and like looking at other things. On my desktop PC, it took a lot longer than expected. It nearly took 12 minutes to render the same project. And I wasn't doing anything on that machine. I just started the rendering and then walked away. That's almost twice the time it took to render this project on my MacBook Pro. I'm absolutely amazed at this. I admit the Intel processor is two years old, but it was a flagship processor, so it should have performed equally to my MacBook Pro. At the most, I would have expected it to be off by 10 to 20%, not like 50%. In this case, the MacBook Pro was nearly 50% faster in rendering videos. Also, you can clearly see having 16 gigabytes of RAM did not impact any render times. On my desktop, I had 464 gigabytes of RAM, but it seems like the CPU was the bottleneck. Now, even for coding, data engineering work, I just prefer using the MacBook Pro. The performance and experience I'm getting is out of this MacBook Pro is absolutely unmatched with any laptops. Now, this MacBook Pro does not get hot at all. Maybe all the heat just gets packed and teleported to another dimension, jokes apart, I think I'm not pushing my laptop hard enough or the M1 chip is super efficient in its design. I think I've thrown everything at it like video editing, browsing on multiple tabs, even heck using Google Chrome on it, which uses up a lot of resources. And even after doing that, the laptop is barely hot. Like it's kind of lukewarm, but not really hot, hot. Historically, I've never been able to do that on a lot other laptops like Windows laptops. Now, just for comparison, here's what happens when I start rendering on my desktop. Now, I can turn on those fans, but I risk of frying my CPU. So yeah, I'm not turning those down and letting it cool on its own. And just to compare my Windows laptop, it's about a two-year-old HP Spectre. As soon as I turn it on, after five minutes, it gets really hot, and then the fan starts blowing hot air out. Maybe it's just an Intel thing now, overheating and making too much noise. Now, there are some downsides to a Mac. Only place where I'm disappointed is the webcam. Guys, this is the webcam test on the MacBook Pro. Honestly, I think it's just really poor quality of recording. Here's with like barely any light turned on. And then here's with some studio lights turned on and adding some more ambient light to the room. Still, it's just poor quality, I think. For almost a $3,000 laptop, the webcam really sucks. Picture quality and the microphone quality are both terrible. But seems like that's the norm these days because most laptops only offer shitty webcams. Also, this laptop is really expensive. I just paid over $3,000 including taxes for this laptop. The new MacBook Pros are priced far beyond what most people are willing to pay. But if you can afford one and if you're a content creator, then this is an easy recommendation. In my opinion, this laptop is geared towards the pros who do heavy duty content creation and software development. Today, right now, at this moment, this is the best laptop you can buy for the price.
I hope you really enjoyed this video and liked my perspective on the MacBook Pro. That's it for me. I'll hope to see you in the next one.